In this video, we will study about how do metals and non-metals react. But before that, we should know that why do metals and non-metals react. To understand that, let's have a look at this table 3.3 which is given in the textbook. So in this table, elements are divided into three categories, noble gases, metals and non-metals and the electronic configurations of all these elements are given. We will concentrate only on their valence electrons. So helium has two valence electrons and it is satisfying duplet rule. Neon and argon, they have eight valence electrons and they satisfy octet rule. Now we all know that noble gases are highly stable and inert and the cause of their stability is having eight valence electrons and satisfying octet rule or two valence electrons and satisfying duplet rule. Now we will look at the metals. So metals either have one, two or three valence electrons and they are unstable. Similarly, non-metals either have five, six or seven valence electrons and they are also not satisfying octet rule. So we see that neither metals nor non-metals are stable. Now we know that everything in the universe wants to achieve stability and so do elements. Now this is the reason that metals and non-metals react because they want to achieve the stability. Now we will find out how do they react. So now sodium has atomic number 11 and its configuration is 281 and sodium is unstable. To become stable if it loses this one electron then its configuration will become 28 and it will follow octet rule. Therefore, to become stable, sodium loses one electron to form Na positive ion. Similarly, magnesium loses two electrons to form Mg2 positive ion and aluminium loses three electrons to become stable to form aluminium three positive ion. Similarly, if we see at non-metals, so non-metals like nitrogen will become stable if it gains three electrons and follow octet rule and it will form N3 negative ion. Similarly, oxygen will gain two electrons to form O2 negative ion and fluorine will gain one electron and form F negative ion and become stable. So now we have noticed that metals lose one, two or three electrons to become stable and they form cations. Similarly, non-metals gain one, two or three electrons to become stable and they form anions. Now what will happen if a cation will combine with an anion? Now we know that these are oppositely charged ions. So there will be strong force of attraction between the two. Now this strong force of attraction between a cation and an anion is called as a chemical bond. Now because the bond is formed between two ions, so this bond is also called as ionic bond. So ionic bond or electrovalent bond is the chemical bond formed by the complete transfer of electrons from one atom to another. Now this transfer of electrons is from metal to a non-metal. The number of electrons lost or gained are called as electrovalency of, an, of the element. For example, if sodium loses one electron to become stable, its electrovalency is one. Similarly, if nitrogen has gained three electrons to become stable, then its electrovalency will be three. So basically electrovalency is same as the valency of an element. Now we will learn the formation of ionic compounds. But before that, we need to know what are electron dot symbols. This is the configuration of sodium which has one valence electron. So for writing its electron dot symbol, we will write the symbol of sodium and we will show one valence electron either as a cross or as a dot. Similarly, chlorine has seven valence electron and we write the symbol of chlorine and show seven valence electrons as seven dots or seven crosses. Now for the formation of bond between sodium and chlorine, we can see sodium wants to lose one electron to become stable while chlorine wants to gain one electron to become stable. So sodium loses its one electron to chlorine and in the process, both become stable. 
so sodium achieves the configuration 28 which is that of inert gas neon and chlorine achieves the inert gas configuration 288 which is that of argon sodium forms na positive ion and chlorine forms cl negative ion and there is force of attraction between the two ions which is called as ionic bond and we get ionic compound sodium chloride now magnesium has two valence electrons and to become stable it wants to lose these two electrons and form magnesium ion and chlorine wants to gain one electron to form chloride ion so one magnesium can lose two electrons but chlorine requires only one electron so for the formation of bond between the two we need two chlorine atoms so magnesium gives one electron to one chlorine and second electron to second chlorine and form mg2 positive ion and each chlorine forms cl negative ion so instead of writing cl two times we can also write it like this one chloride ion and you put twice here so the compound mgcl2 is formed so formation of sodium oxide this is electron dot symbol of sodium and this is of oxygen so from here it is clear that oxygen needs two electrons to become stable but sodium can give only one so for one oxygen we need two sodium atoms here one sodium gives one electron and second gives second electron and both sodium atoms form sodium ions and as oxygen has gained these two electrons so it forms o2 negative ion we can write both sodium ions together as na positive twice o2 negative and we get the ionic compound na2o now for the practice you can draw the electron dot structure for showing these ionic compounds calcium chloride aluminum chloride calcium oxide and potassium sulfide we have learned the formation of the ionic compounds now we will study a few of the properties of these compounds with the help of this activity 3.13 given in the textbook so we'll take the samples of sodium chloride potassium iodide and barium chloride and we will check their physical state it is found that all these salts are hard solids then we will keep these samples on a metal spatula and heat directly on the flame so this is the bunsen burner and this is the metal spatula and on this metal spatula we will keep the salts one by one and heat them directly on this flame this is called as flame test now first of all on the metal spatula we will put sodium chloride and heat it and we will observe that it burns with the golden yellow colored flame after that we will put potassium iodide and observe that it burns with violet colored flame while barium chloride will burn with the apple green colored flame now the color of these flames are due to the metals sodium potassium and barium after that we will take these salts one by one and dissolve them in water it is found that all the salts will be soluble in water it is so because these salts are inorganic substances and water is also an inorganic solvent so they dissolve in each other then we'll try dissolving them in petrol and kerosene but they will not dissolve in them as petrol and kerosene are the organic solvents and they do not dissolve inorganic substances in them after that we will check the conductivity of all these salts for that we'll make the solutions of these salts and put them inside this beaker one by one there are two electrodes a battery a bulb and a switch so as soon as we switch on the bulb will start glowing in all the three cases this shows that the salt solutions of all the three salts are good conductors of electricity now we will revise the properties of ionic compounds first was physical nature and we found that ionic compounds are hard solids the reason for their hardness is the strong forces of attraction between the positive and the negative ions then they have high melting and boiling points again for the same reason that is strong forces of attraction between the ions and it requires large amount of energy to break these strong forces 
then we check the solubility they are soluble in water but they are insoluble in kerosene and petrol after that we check the conductivity of all these salts and it was found that all the salt solutions can conduct electricity the reason is that in the solution form the ions are free to move so they can conduct electricity but what if we take these salts in the solid state will they conduct electricity no they will not conduct electricity in the solid state because in the solid state ions are held with strong forces of attraction and they are not free to move so if they if the ions will not move then current will not be conducted but if we take these salts in the molten state then they will conduct electricity the reason is that when we melt them we provide them heat and the forces of attraction are overcome due to the heat so about the conduction we see that in solid state salts do not conduct electricity in the solution form ionic compounds conduct electricity and in the molten state also these ionic compounds can conduct electricity